everyone, how are you doing? Joe Marty here from MobileCupOfJoe.com here to bring you all my full review of the Nokia Lumia 820 running on at and service. Nokia Lumia 820 is an exclusive to at and but for f selling for 50 bucks, walk into your local at and store, pick up the Nokia Lumia 820, $50 to your contract, and you are set to go. So should you spend 50 bucks and pick this up, or spend another $50 and go all the way with the Nokia Lumia 920? I'm Joe Martin with my review of the Nokia Lumia 820. We're going to find out right now. But before I go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over, and sit on down. And take a swig from your mobile cup of Joe. So to kick off this review, let's talk about some design and build quality aspects of the Nokia Lumia 820. Nokia Lumia 820 is 9.9 .9 millimeters thick and weighs in 160 grams. So this is obviously not the thinnest or the lightest smartphone that you're going to find on the market. But I personally I didn't mind the extra thickness or the weight. I kind of liked having that weight to know that I was holding the phone. It actually feels so surprisingly good when you hold it in your hand. Even though it does have the extra weight, it doesn't weigh your hand down too much and I personally did not have a problem with it. Top of the device, we have our Nokia logo, our AT&T logo, and our front-facing VGA quality camera. Below that, we have our 4.3-inch superior view screen with an 800 by 480 WVGA resolution. Below that, we have our standard Windows Phone 8 capacitive touch buttons, our back button, our home button, and our search button. Left of the device, we have absolutely nothing. Right of the phone, we have got our volume rocker, power slash lock button, and our dedicated camera capture button. Top of the device, we have our 3.5mm headphone jack, and on the bottom we have our little speaker there that actually sounds much better than you would think, and our micro USB syncing slash charging port. Back of the phone, we have got our 8 megapixel camera with LED flash with our Carl Zeiss lens, and it actually takes really good pictures. Oh, we'll get into that a little bit later, though. Now, one issue I have with the design of the phone is this back material that Nokia puts on their 820. It's extremely slippery and actually caused me to drop the phone a few times, as it probably will you if you, if you have this phone or decide to purchase it. It's very slippery. There is no grip on here whatsoever, and it's a really annoying feature and one of my biggest issues I had with the design of the 820. But going on to some hardware of the 820. Talk about some geeky specs real quick. Under the hood, we have got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 1.5 GHz dual core S4 processor and 1 GB of RAM and 8 gigs of internal storage. So having that 1 GB of RAM and 1.5 GHz dual core processor uh, runs really great. I'll boot up Fruit Ninja for you real quick so you can see how it runs. And let's launch some Fruit Ninja. Turn off our umbrella light so you can see the screen a little bit better. When that loads up, I got a game. We'll just resume that. So you can see that the game runs really great. I know there's no lag at all, really. And it is a very functional processor. A Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor is extremely powerful. And having a 1.5 gigahertz dual core is really impressive, especially when you consider the price of this phone. Now, the screen of the Lumia 820 is an 800 by 480 WVGA resolution, and if you can see that, all the colors are pretty vibrant. See, the greens are very green, the reds are really red, yellows are really yellow, and the purples are really purple. Uh, they're very vibrant, though. They're really saturated, and I really do like that, but if we get too close to the text, you can see that you can see the pixels on it, and you can see that that uh, Internet Explorer icon does not look as great. You're obviously going to get some better uh, text and colors on uh, newer phones nowadays, especially with 720p HD kind of becoming the norm. So the 800 by 480 resolution is going to be a downer for a lot of people, but I personally did not have a huge issue with it. It would have been nice to have an HD display, but then again, you got to consider Oh, this is selling for $50 for the two-year contract, so you obviously aren't going to be able to get top-of-the-line specs for it. Now, this phone also comes equipped with LTE capabilities. Slide the top from the top down of the phone, and if it wants to show, you can see that we're only getting 4G here. Well, this is because in the area I live in Lawrence, Michigan, we only have access to 4G. I was actually surprised we got 4G at all. 
because we have one traffic light in the town that I live in. But this one is equipped with LTE capabilities from the 4G service. I was able to access, though. Everything ran really great. Uh, downloading apps and uh, browsing the web was very smooth and very fast and is a huge step up from 3G, which is what I've been using uh, before I got the H20. So 4G, if you're coming from 3G, you're going to see a huge speed improvement, but if you're coming back from LDE, uh, you're obviously going to see that it is not nearly as fast as uh, some LTE services are nowadays. But going on to the cameras, like I mentioned before, the front facing is a WV is a VGA resolution, and the back is an LED or I'm sorry, an 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. Show you some picture samples that I took. Turn off the old umbrella light again, and I'll show you a front facing picture I took with a front facing camera. You can see that it is actually a really really crappy picture. There is good lighting condition when I took this photo. And you can see that the colors are not really accurate, and there's a lot of digital noise going on. There's a ton of digital no noise going on, if you know what it is. But that's actually nothing but a little picture with digital noise going on. So really unimpressed with the front-facing camera. But if we go to the rear-facing, you can see the pictures actually look really good. You know, you're obviously going to get some better resolutions. I apologize for sniffling so much. Um... You're going to get better resolutions uh, for pictures with higher-end smartphones, but for $50, this thing actually takes really good images. The Carl Zeiss lens really picks up colors very accurately, and these pictures aren't going to show up the greatest on the phone. If you go to our written review on our website, you're going to be able to see them a little bit better. But you can see that it actually picks up uh, images and everything really, really great. Uh, pictures, I thought, looked pretty good overall. And so, uh, for $50, again, I was pretty impressed with the camera resolution, at least with the rear-facing camera, on the uh, Nokia Lumia 820. But going on to some software of the device. So this thing's run Windows Phone 8, and one of the biggest things with Windows Phone, Windows Phone 8 specifically, is Live Tiles. Now Live Tiles were first introduced in Windows Phone 7, but they've improved a great deal in Windows Phone 8. You can see that these tiles on your home screen are constantly updating with relevant information. With the IMDB app, you got the IMDB, IMDB logo right there, but it should uh, flip in a minute to your latest uh, movie story of the day. And with the Weather Channel live tile, you can see that it shows our current uh, weather temperature, and then it flips to a little mini radar of your location. Your Photos live tile also switches between photos constantly. And your people tile will uh, flip through your profile pictures of your people and your contacts. It's really neat because you've got all this information that's constantly being updated to your home screen. It's like a little window into what's going on in your world. It's really cool. You can see, too, with the Facebook Live tile, if we enlarge it, we can actually see our co my, my cover photo. And it'll, as a Live tile progresses, it'll even go to my most recent post. So it's really nice to have... Nice to have all that customization with your live tiles running in the background. It's actually another thing I want to talk about with Windows Phone 8 is the customization. With Windows Phone 8, we can finally change the icon size of our live tiles. There you've got a small size, a wide size, and a medium size. All of the tiles can go to the small or medium size, but only specific ones will be able to go to that wide size that you saw with the phone. So all the tiles can be this size or this, but only specific ones will be able to have that uh, wide size right there. Now, another big customization feature with Windows Phone, actually introduced with Windows Phone 7 again, is changing your theme. So right now my background is set to dark and my accent color is violet. We can change the background to a light. We can change our accent color to all these colors. Uh, Microsoft has added a ton of new colors since Windows Phone 7. And let's change it to teal. And back, and you can see we have a whole new look to our phone. Uh, changing the theme of your phone really gives it a new look and feel, and it kind of change it to what you're feeling that day. And I really liked it. The customization of this phone is really deep. I'm a huge fan of customization. That's why I actually like Android so much. But I was really impressed with the level of custom customization you can get with Windows Phone 8. Another big thing that I liked about Windows Phone 8 is how smooth it is. Now, of course, a lot of this is coming from that dual-core processor, but Windows Phone is just a smooth-running operating system in general. Not really going to ever find a lot of lag with Windows Phone. You can see that just sliding through all of your applications and sliding through your home screen is a very smooth experience. Open Internet Explorer 10, which is the default browser for Windows Phone 8. And let's go to google.com. 
and you can see that it's very smooth and let's hop on to mob mobile cup of joe.com keyboard included with the phone is actually really great too uh, you cannot get a third party keyboard with Windows Phone, but I really did like uh, the keyboard that uh, Microsoft includes with Windows Phone 8. Okay, so it didn't bring us to the website. I must not have hit .com in there, but you can see that's a very fast operating system. Internet Explorer 10, I know uh, not a lot of people are fans of IE 10 or IE in general. I'm not the biggest fan of Internet Explorer, but it actually runs really good on uh, Windows Phone 8. Now, another thing I'd like to talk about, this is specific to Nokia's Lumia phones are these value-added applications Nokia adds to their Lumia phones. So we scroll down, we see that we have got four apps from Nokia. We got Nokia City Lens, Nokia Drive, Nokia Maps, Nokia Music. Nokia City Lens is this kind of augmented reality application. I'll see if I can show it to you right now. And what it is, say you're going to go into an area and you're not really familiar with it, you can say you want to get a hotel or get some food, or see some sites, get transports. Uh, you go to nearby, you calibrate your phone when you're in the area, and you can see it shows you all of these places that are nearby to me right now through my camera lens. So let's hit on, uh, let's see, let's click on Fountain Electronics. This is a store that's in Lawrence. And it'll bring up Nokia Maps, and it'll tell you a little bit about it. You can get directions, shows you the exact location of where it is, what type of place it is. Oh, really neat. So, like I said, you go to an area you're not very familiar with, and you can take your camera, scan around the area, and see uh, what the town has to offer. It's really cool. You got this little uh, mini map right there to show you all the different things that are in the area, and it's an extremely, extremely cool application. Nokia Drive is a turn-by-turn -turn navigational th system. Nokia Maps is Nokia's own mapping service. And Nokia Music is Nokia's answer to Pandora or iHeartRadio. It actually works really good. You can pick up to three artists and make a mixed radio. Uh, it'll play music from those artists or music that's similar to those artists. And it will uh, play this and you can save your mixed radio for an offline if you want to listen to your music while you don't have a good connection or if you want to save some data. You can hear too, uh, show you an example of the speaker performance. Uh, all the way. Sounds really good. I have to yell to go over it. Sounds really great. Uh, while you're in Nokia Music, if you want to uh, change the volume while Nokia Music is open, hit your volume rocker. It'll show you the song that's playing. You can pause it or fast forward to the next one. It's really, really great. And uh, actually really surprised at how much I ended up enjoying Nokia Music. Now one thing I can talk about is Microsoft's uh, Windows Store. Windows Phone 8 has a terrible lack of applications. It only has a total of 150,000 mobile applications. While that may sound like a lot, it is really a terribly small amount. Uh, Apple's App Store and Google's Google Play Store have a, just so many more applications, like 600,000, 750,000, whatever, getting close to a million now. Microsoft's Windows Store only has 150,000. One of the biggest issues I have is that there are no Google service applications. You can see that if we search, let's say, YouTube, which is one of the most used applications on pretty much any mobile phone. You see we've got one from Microsoft Corporation, but all this is is a bookmark to the uh, YouTube mobile site. If you don't believe me, I've downloaded it. I can show it to you. We click on it and it just takes us to Internet Explorer 10 and opens up the mobile YouTube site. While it's functional and while you can go to mobile sites of Google, etc., applications uh, for services like this are much more stable and a lot more easy to use and very a lot more user friendly. So if you're a fan of Google services, you might want to keep that in mind. I did not know that. Uh, well, it is a big bummer for me. I've just been using the mobile versions of the sites, but seeing a dedicated YouTube service applications would be really nice to see. Until Microsoft can get a better application store though, you may want to keep that in mind that all the apps you love may not be on your new Windows Phone device. Now, Going on to my final verdict of the phone, overall I really did enjoy my time with Nokia Lumia 820. Selling for only 50 bucks on AT&T right now, it's a hell of a deal. You're getting dual core 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor, Snapdragon S4 no less, a gig of RAM, 8 gigs of internal storage, a decent uh, resolution for your screen, a really good rear facing camera, and you're getting Windows Phone 8 all in a design that overall works pretty good. Uh, for 50 bucks more though, you can get the Nokia Lumia 920, 
which has a better design, a longer lasting battery life, and a pure view HD display. So in the end, it is going to come down to a matter of price. If you want to get the cheapest product, uh, Windows Phone 8 device you can possibly get and on at and service, Nokia Lumia A20 is an excellent, excellent choice. If you don't mind spending another 50 bucks though, I would personally go all the way with the 920 because you're getting everything that we talked about on the Nokia Lumia A20, but with the 920 improves on some of the things we talked about here and it actually has some uh, added features that are not present on the 820. So in the end though, it is going to come down to how much you're comfortable with paying. Uh, if you have to spend only $50 and are looking for get a Windows Phone 8 device, go for the Nokia Lumia 820. Keep in mind, this is an exclusive to AT&T, but I had excellent service coverage pretty much everywhere I was with the AT&T, and this is a great product. For 50 bucks, walk into an AT&T store, pick it up, walk out working, Best Buy, AT&T, even get some better deals on us on Amazon.com or other online sites. This is a really great phone. I had a couple issues with the design of it and some software issues, but the only real hardware issue I had was with the front-facing camera. Overall, this is a really, really great phone. Although you can find a higher quality Windows phone with the 920, this is still a great choice if you need a budget Windows Phone 8 device on AT&T. So overall, I'm giving the Nokia Lumia 820 an 8 out of 10, which we are calling great. 8 out of 10 is a great score. Uh, do you have the 820 or are you going to plan to get the 820? Comment below, let me know. Uh, for a more detailed review, head over to our website. I'll put a link in the description below that goes directly to the review that I put up of the phone. It's a little bit more detailed. I'll uh, get more inside scoop on the 820. But there you guys go. Uh, if you liked the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. If you liked it, it takes one second to do so. Really help support the show. If you want to show your support towards the show even more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button at the top of your screen for more Mobile Cup of Joe videos. You guys know we are on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Don't forget to check out our website at www.mobilecupofjoe.com for your latest mobile tech news outside of our videos. I am Joe Lyon from mobilecupofjoe.com. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to Nokia for hooking us up with Nokia Lumia 820. We could not have re reviewed this phone without you guys. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.